Hello and welcome to another Retro Crazy. By the time you're watching this, it's 2021. So Happy New Year, everybody. Hope you had a good time and let's hope 2021 is a lot better than 2020. So on the workbench, dining room table in reality, is my Atari Lynx 2. I picked this up from Pixel Planet Gaming uh, up in Leven. I'll put a, a, a link in the description. And it came boxed. Not the best condition box, but hey, this is a French version. Let me just move this and you'll see that it was imported by Atari France and is the Batman Returns pack. So what do we get in the box? Come back to this in a minute but we get a copy of Batman Returns. We get our guarantee, our owner's manual, a nice links up cable, and the important bit under here will be the links too. So let me move all this out of the way. Now, not only do I have a copy of Batman Returns, but I also picked up uh, a few extra titles to go with it. So we have a, a few to try and test once everything is done. So what about the links itself? And what about this mysterious packet that... Uh, I put to the side. Well, it came with a full cap kit. So let's see what we can do to recover this. Now I've not powered this up to see if it actually works. So I'm just gonna wing it. It'll either work or it won't. Now this is the Lynx 2. I actually did own a Lynx 1 and it's one of the, the, the regrets is selling a, an almost pristine Lynx 1 with games years ago before I properly got started in collecting because I wasn't using it and a friend of mine fancied it for keeping himself occupied during the quiet times at his work. So I parted with it, such is life. I do have a second Lynx 2, however, that particular Lynx 2 has a screen issue. So that may be something I do a, a, a what they call a McWill a screen replacement on later. Screen on this has got some scuffs and scratches, but I can also see some dust and dirt underneath on the lower screen. Never having taken one of these apart, this could be rather fun. Because there are no obvious screws. Now, battery compartment should be there which will need to come off anyway because it joins between the two. I've got a single screw in here, but I think there's going to be more than one screw hold this together. Now it is a standard Phillips. So there are four Phillips screws hidden underneath the rubber bumpers. These are still sticky, so I'm going to put them to the side so they don't get caught on anything. So let's see how this comes apart. Well, the good news is there's absolutely nothing attached to the bottom. I will be giving this a good clean because there is a lot of uh, grime which needs cleaned off 
especially between the two halves of the shell. The metal clips will need to come off to do that. So let's just quickly nip those off. So that's the back shell stripped. This was obviously for the neck strap, a back strap. That one is definitely bent, so I'll straighten that one. So I'll put this one to the side. Now I can see a massive shield. Will this just lift up now? It will, with the battery compartment coming as well. So I'm just trying to find a way of safely removing it. There we go. Again, that's clean. That can just go to the side. If you needed to clean it, just pop out the spring connectors. For example, if the connectors were uh, corroded, you could pop them out, allowing you to clean them up or replace, worst case scenario. So again, that can go to the side. And now I'm going to carefully lift the board up. I can see a number of connectors and ribbon cables at this side. So I'm going to lift it carefully from the opposite side just to see what's under. And we have a number of cables and wires. So these need to be disconnected before I can get in fully. This one here is the backlight. I can see that going to the backlight. That's it disconnected. This one is the speaker, which doesn't want to come just yet. So let's see if we can carefully disconnect these ribbon cables. It looks like they, they pull down and there is a notch in there, which possibly lifts that out the way. So let's see if we can just pop it carefully. It is, and it's just coming down. I'm just using a flat blade, twisting it either direction, and that's popped down. Let me see if I can zoom in for you. You can see this one has popped down in comparison to this one. Hopefully you can see the notch here. And I'm just going to pop the flat blade in and twist carefully in one direction and then the other. Like so. Now you should be able to see that both are popped down and if we're very careful we should be able to lift off these cables. One. So lifting the board back, you can see the speaker cable can now very carefully just be wiggled out. I'm going to pop this to the side at the moment, there's more to come out to clean that screen. But you can see it's, it's literally a number of uh, screws, Phillips screws all the way around and a mix. I'm going to guess that's for the screen and that is for the buttons. So let me pop this to the side. So here we are and just looking round, let me move this to where you can see it. Looking round, you can see. And, oh my goodness. 1920 capacitors. That's one or two. They are all through hole, thankfully. I do note that a lot of them are at this very jaunty angle. I'm not quite sure why that is. Maybe it's space saving. This cap kit seems to list 
everything with it. Now I recognise the style I've purchased from this company before. I just do not, off the top of my head, remember who they are. But it comes with full instructions. There you go, there's a full listing of all of the capacitors. Classicvideogames.co.uk There we are, that's who supplied this kit. And there is the cap map, as they call it, with all the capacitors listed by their component number, which then relates to this. So if we turn the links board to the same direction, there you go. Nice little blueprint with all the like the caps, C3 tucked in the middle there. So they're all listed nicely where they all go. So this is going to be a straightforward recapping. It is going to be a case of desolder and replace. There are three holes. So everything should be on this side with the exception of C3, who is tucked underneath here. It's not the best place in the world to have one. I'm going to have to see how I get into this little cheeky so-and-so. What I may end up doing is desoldering all of these joints to lift this shield up, which seems to mirror to the points on the upper shield, because it looks like this has to lift slightly and the screw for that, there's one here, but the other one is tucked under here. A little bit more work to get into it, but let's start. So I've decided I'm going to start with the most awkward one on the board, which is the one slap bang underneath this plate. So I'm setting the soldering iron for this to 400 degrees just to get through the solder fairly quickly. Let's get on. Well that's the first stage desoldering done. This is now clear. The actual shield itself, they've soldered through and then, uh, sorry, they've put the heat shield through and then twisted it and then soldered it on. So while I've got a lot of the solder off, of course these are now twisted in place. However, I'm wondering, depending on the position of the cap, I should be able to access it, which is right up here. So I'm not needing to take this protective shielding off, I can actually move it back far enough to access. These are obviously sticky pads to stop them shorting, the components shorting against the backing, which caused me a little bit of an issue here when uh, yeah, it melted on. So I'll be able to do that and then just hold these down as they're soldered back on. So we actually only need to desolder this section here. Okay, scratch what I said. This is going to need to come off. It looks like the legs are actually quite far apart, not the two I thought they were, but actually reasonably spread. So for safety, because I'm not sure what's just been desoldered here, single leg, I'm going to desolder both. Take this off so we can actually see underneath that heat shield.
Well, that has to be one of the most difficult things I've had to do so far in one of these videos. The whole the whole thing there was just a nightmare. This plate is quite thick and what they've done is they've pushed it through and twisted and then soldered but these are really really short so they don't come through far which means you can't really get much of a purchase even with a pair of uh, fine pliers to actually twist it back. The holes are fairly tight so getting the thing to, to actually drop out was quite difficult. So I ended up using a very fine set of tweezers on the upper surface and I looked for these cutouts and all I did was ensuring I didn't go in far I just sat the tweezers there and then gently pried down turned the board over heated it at the uh, relevant points and eventually it popped the, the the last one was the one hidden up under here which is very difficult to get into so once this is done, I'll clean this up properly for popping it back in. I'm going to leave them straight. I'm going to straighten them and make sure they're all straight so that uh, if this ever needs done in the future, it's going to be much, much easier. However, here's the little blighter that we wanted to, to get to. And obviously that shield is just protecting the core chips. And copyright Atari 1990. So let's remove this little beastie. And just before I do so, um, while this can be done with a soldering iron, the, the, this particular heat shield I ended up moving over to a much wider tip there on my soldering station. So it's it's if you're going to do this long term, it's worth investing in a decent soldering station. That's still hot, but uh, easily removed and replaced. So these are interchangeable tips. And I use an OU INT 2702A Plus uh, rework station. I spent a little bit of extra money on it, but it's well worth it in the long term. So I just change back over to my fine tip and that's it reloaded ready. So now I can go back and continue with this one capacitor. That capacitor is now in. I'll flush cut that as much as I can. So I'm just going to put the sticky back tape back over to protect it. So let's straighten these legs. Well that took an extraordinary amount of time just to do one capacitor, however it's in and you would never be able to tell it's been replaced after all that, however time to move on and do the rest.
So there we are, all done and dusted. Everything recapped, everything replaced, bottom of the board cleaned. We've got two wheels which are control contrast and volume or screen brightness and volume. So I'm going to use a little bit of deoxit just as a bit of preventative maintenance. Seeing as we've got it this far, and I'm going to run some. on each one. And then just run the wheels. Let that work its way in. Hopefully that will get in. And there we go. Board all done. So I'm going to pop this to the side now. And have a look at the top. And let's pop this apart. So that's free, but there's still four holding what looks like the backlight in. In fact, it's the backlight and the screen come out as one unit. That is quite dusty. So let's pop this to the side at the moment and come back and look at that. And now, hopefully, this lower frame will come out and that's complete. With all the, the button points and the, and the traces. I'll give this a little bit of clean over with isopropyl alcohol and remove the uh, hairs. However, this is the point I wanted to get to, and that's the removal of all these. Somebody has obviously owned a dog and had this. I suppose it could be a cat. Don't know if you can see that. But that's inside the console. Right, this is now ready to go and get a wash. Although I'm going to have to be careful if I get water under here should see it actually goes in which is a shame because there's dust in there and it would be handy to be able to get that out for cleaning sometimes you can flex these and it'll pop however this is not wanting to flex right I'm going to have to be careful when I'm cleaning this I'm going to take all the plastics and I'm going to give them a good wash. So, I'll be back in a minute. Well, once you allow for drying time, that's more than just a few moments later. And how stupid do I feel? How many of you spotted before I disappeared off to do the cleaning that I hadn't paid attention to this because while cleaning, I realised that that's a pop-off panel. So it's all clean, let me drop it back in place. And it's accessed one, two, three, four clips inside. And that's it. Much cleaner, much nicer. Let's pop it back together. And the buttons are actually marked. A, B, C, D. 
and cast into the buttons. Right in the corner there's a C, so that's this particular button. I've just got to work out which way up it is. Would have been handier to have taken a note. In fact, the cutout groove works perfectly. And that one's marked A like you actually need to know. We said we're going to give the screen a quick clean. You can see just how dusty it is, all the little marks on it. And I'm going to use a, a microfiber cloth and just very lightly brush these off. Now, what I am noticing is what looks like water droplets or liquid droplets on the screen. And that has me a little concerned because I've also noted there are some on the back. So is this a liquid damage unit? <laughs> and if so, that's not boding well for it working. Now that screen is particularly bad with the droplets. So I'm going to have to use a little bit of isopropyl alcohol and hopefully lift the worst of those off. That may, yes, that shows them up on camera much better. Now I got my links when they very first came out. At the time I was working for a company called Database Computers in Dunfermline. And if you hadn't guessed, they sold well, computer systems. Not so much in the way of repairs, but certainly the computer systems. And I saw the links when it was first released. I uh, loved it a bit and ended up buying it. And it came with California Games, which was annoying, yet highly addictive. I, I like the surfing on it the best. I don't know why. Maybe it was one of the few I could do well. I think when I eventually got rid of it, I had three or four titles. So that's done. I will give the back a quick once over as well. If I'm going to do it, I may as well do it properly. I'm just going to use some kitchen roll for this. There's nothing delicate on the plastic, so drop that back into the guide channel. So first off, goes this tray that holds the controls in place with its cable. And now comes the screen. Now that that's done, it's on to the main circuit board itself. And again, it's got to go in that way to connect us facing. So let's just open the connectors up. This is probably the fiddliest bit of the lot. I should be able to get that connected separately. And now it's just going to be a juggling match. Getting everything lined up and in. Oh. <laughs> This just does not want to play ball, and I'm conscious of the fact I'm pulling on the other cable. Right, it's in. 
can I get it all the way in and then locked? Then I don't know if it's going to make a connection until we power it up and test it. So let me reconnect the speaker. And now when we power it on, we get a display. Let me turn the light off so you can see. However, you can clearly see there is a line down the display. And at the moment, it seems to be pretty much in black and white. Volume is fine. And yeah, the brightness works. So let's see if we can backlight on and off. That's working. Level one, it is in color. Hopefully you can see that. Yeah, I never said I could play this. So a working links at least. We can pop the bumpers back on. And that's them back into their grooves. And that gives you your finger swells on the back, which are rubberized and comfy. So let's pop out Batman Returns. Pop that back in the box, decant the batteries, and I don't think I'll show the uh, the other titles I was going to purely and simply because on that quality of screen it's not going to do them any justice whatsoever. So not the best outcome, but an outcome, and we're here for the good and the bad. So thank you for watching Retro Crazy. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you do, please remember to like and subscribe. And have a great new year. Take care all.